Grace and peace to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Worship with the American International Church. Happy Pentecost Sunday and Happy Youth Sunday. As you join us in worship through this video, you're going to notice a very familiar format to our worship. But what I want you to know on this Youth Sunday is that behind the scenes, our youth have been at work crafting this worship service to lead you to connection with God today. They have helped to write and shape our prayers. They have guided our musicians. They have chosen the order of worship and they have meditated on the story of Pentecost to invite us all into unity in the wild spirit of God today. To invite us to be united across nations, citizenship, languages, and even across time and space as you join us from wherever you are and whatever day it is on YouTube. So with gratitude for God continuing to speak to us and through some of our youngest members here at AIC, let us enter into worship together. Then I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, thus says the Lord. Send down your justice like a strong wind. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Send down the brain of your love. Your old shall dream dreams, and your young shall see visions. Send down your spirit, breathe life in your people. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, and we shall be united as one people in God. And now join me in our prayer of invocation. Creating spirit, you have given the breath of life to us all, from every nation and language. Pour out your spirit, on the whole creation. Come in rushing wind and a flashing fire to turn sin and sorrow within us into faith, power, and delight. Amen. In worship, we need each other to find our connection with God, and we need the voices of others to hear the Spirit. So we ask you to reach out to others right now, passing the peace of Christ to someone else. May the peace of Christ be with you today.
my lord spoke out of his mouth came fire and smoke looked all around me looked so fine i asked my lord if all was mine every time i feel the spirit moving in my heart i will pray every time i feel the spirit moving in my heart i will pray jordan river is chilly and cold it chills the body but not the soul there ain't but one train upon this track it runs to heaven and right back Our scripture is from the book of Acts, chapter 2. When Pentecost day arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound from heaven like the howling of a fierce wind filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered. They were mystified, because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, Look! Aren't all the people who are speaking Galileans, every one of them? How then can each of us hear them speaking in our native language, Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the regions of Libya, bordering Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own languages. They were all surprised and bewildered. Some asked each other, What does this mean? Peter stood with the other eleven apostles. He raised his voice and declared, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem, know this. Listen carefully to my words. These people aren't drunk as you suspect. After all, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Rather, this is what was spoken through Prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I'll pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and will prophesy. I will cause wonders to happen in the heavens above, and signs in the earth below. Blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness, and the moon will be changed into blood. Before the great and spectacular day of the Lord comes. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you join with us in a word of prayer? God, may the words of our mouths and the meditations of all of our hearts together be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. This is Pentecost Sunday, and 
uh, Youth Sunday. This is the day that we look to the origin of the church. Jesus had already ascended, if you remember, and his disciples were left in Jerusalem trying to follow in his footsteps, trying to follow his teachings, and trying to discern the way forward into the future together. Then, on this Jewish festival day, the Spirit of God shows up, descends on these followers of Jesus and empowers them to speak a message that people from all over the world could hear, people from all nations and languages. You know, the Holy Spirit is a wild and surprising and mysterious expression of God. But it seems like in, even in all of that mystery, there is something about God's Spirit that always draws us together, that always holds us together as one. And so, for our sermon this morning, you will not only hear from me, but two of our youth. Our first preacher today is David. Uh, David is one of our consistent youth who shows up and is part of just about everything we do in the youth group. And David, as we uh, planned this Youth Sunday, you agreed to be one of our preachers. And as we collaborated on some of the things that you might want to say as part of our message today, you were drawn to ideas about things that that draw us together and the ways that church and faith can draw us together. So would you share with us today, what do you think are some of the things that hold all of us together today? For me, one important thing that holds us together is a uh, celebration through festivals. Um, most people, including Christians ourselves, normally gather with their families to celebrate different uh, festivals like Christmas and Easter because spending time with loved ones is always really important, especially as part of these celebrations. For example, my own grandma from my dad's side comes for Christmas Day and New Year's so we can all be together in each other's company. And we do things like eat uh, different feasts and open gifts together. We are also held together when we go through times of hardship and we show our similarities in the ways which we deal with our hardship. During the Christmas period itself, it's a time in which many people try to be the best version of themselves so they can help others who are going through hardship and get through it easier. Yeah, I, I, I love the way that you have noticed that good and bad, celebration and hardship both have the capacity to bring us together. Uh, you know, I think that's because, like we are talking about on Pentecost Sunday, the Spirit of God is with us in those good times and bad times. And knowing that can help us get through and can bring us together. You know, over the past year, we've been talking about not just celebrations and festivals, but that there are other stories other than just Pentecost that we call stories that shape us, stories that hold us together as people of faith, that connect us across time and space, just like the Spirit of God does. So uh, I wonder if you would tell the church what is one of your favorite stories that we discussed in youth group over the past year? And what's something that that story taught you? My favorite story is the plagues of Egypt, um, because it's about how people had faith in God and in return, he protected them. The purpose of the plagues was to show the Israelites that the God of their fathers was alive and worthy of their worship, but also to show the Egyptians that their God is nothing compared to the one of ours. It also teaches us that God is omnipotent, which means all powerful, as he can create all these plagues and protect us. But also that those who worship him 
will be saved. In addition, this story can relate to us today as we should all have faith in God through times of hardship, like the COVID pandemic, when many of those around us have been lost. Yeah, I think uh, you're picking up on something that was in a lot of the stories we talked about, that hope that God will be faithful is a big part of the stories that shape us. And that, uh, well, the, the one you've chosen, the, the plagues and God's rescuing the people from Egypt is such a significant story that, like you've said, when we're going through a pandemic and hardship today, that story can hold us together, can teach us to have faith, and can help us to have hope that God will rescue us in some way, even when it's hard to imagine. David, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with the church via YouTube today. Thanks. Our second preacher today is Benjamin, who's joining me now. And Benjamin, we've heard a little bit about what Pentecost means in general, and we've heard David's thoughts on how Pentecost can draw people together and what that means in our world today. But Benjamin, you were drawn to some different questions, and so I wonder if you would share your thoughts with us. So Benjamin, what do you hear about God in this story, in the story of Pentecost? Uh, I think that based on this story, God presents himself as someone who stands for all, even more so than in other stories, because he breaks down the language barrier, which brings everyone together. In playing this service, we as a youth group unanimously agreed that the theme of this service should be unity, and that is because that we all agree that God shows that he unites all of the people of the world, no matter a cultural or language barrier. Our God is the kind of person who stands for all of us as a human race, regardless of race, ethnicity, gender, or any other difference that there may be between us. Events of the past year have made us feel like we are enemies, not united as humans. Examples of these are how COVID has made all of us feel isolated from others, as well as news events such as the killing of George Floyd. God wants us to know that we are all looked after by him and united in him as one people. Uh, that that's amazing, Benjamin. I, I couldn't have said it better for myself. I love that you're seeing just how important the all and the inclusion of different people from different places is in the story, but you haven't just left it there in the story. You've brought the story into our world today, which is a perfect example for us and a lesson for all of us to learn from Pentecost as well. You mentioned when we were planning this Youth Sunday service, and uh, if you remember, there's a couple of things that we thought were really important for any gathering of people to be considered church. Uh, we said that connecting with God through prayer and through all of these different things was really important, but that having other people in a worship service with you is really important for connecting with God. So would you also give us your thoughts on how does having other people around you help you connect with God and sense the spirit of God around you? Well, I believe that having others around us in church is one of the main ideas that the people who started the idea of worship in public would have wanted because it allows us to interact with each other and we can use each other as resources to both learn more about the scriptures and also to gain friendships with people we see every week. This is especially highlighted in the Pentecost story as people from different backgrounds that wouldn't necessarily meet each other in other ways are connected through God. I think it is very similar to our own church, as we have people from seemingly everywhere that gather together, united by God. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. Thank you so much, Benjamin, for sharing uh, your thoughts and interpretations of our scripture and of the story of Pentecost with us today. Thank you, Benjamin. In these reflections, 
We've heard the reality that our world is often filled with stories about being torn apart rather than being brought together. The pandemic has left so many people with family who have died, with others feeling isolated, with others struggling without jobs. Violence in Palestine, the murder of George Floyd, and that list could go on and on, has ripped us apart and left us feeling like enemies with our neighbors, rather than like we're being brought together. But as we heard from Pastor Jennifer last week, there is a deeper and a truer reality in our world, and that is the reality of God's Spirit at Pentecost. In God, we are actually not separate at all. And so our youth have helped us see that the reality is we are all interconnected in God. In Jesus, we are one as God and Jesus are one. And so like that hope of a God who rescues the Hebrews from enslavement in Egypt, Pentecost is a story about hope for the future. The church is born and empowered to speak the good news of God's faithfulness to all the world. The young are empowered to prophesy a message from God, and the day is coming when all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hearing these insights and being led in worship by our youth is a Pentecost message in itself because the church is always being reborn. And it's a vision of hope because even the youngest members of our church are still being shaped by the stories of God's faithfulness and are empowered to speak good news to everyone. This good news is meant for everyone. All nations, all languages, all ages, you. Thanks be to God. Amen. into this space of prayer together, we know that by joining our hearts and our minds and our words together and before God, we exist in this space as one community. Know that throughout the week, we are continuing to pray with you and for you, 
you can get in touch with one of us directly or you can email prayer at amchurch.co.uk to share your joys and your concerns that way. But for now, let us join as one voice in prayer today. Holy Spirit, fire of God, you set us alight this day with your power. In the voices and the witness of these young people, you have fulfilled the Pentecost promise that our sons and daughters would prophesy. You inspire us to see visions and dream dreams of a world where all are one. By the power of your Holy Spirit, unite people of all races and nations as multiple and diverse human beings bound together by one purpose, to love and care for one another in your name. Bring to life today your Pentecost power that everyone would hear the good news of love in a way that they can understand. Each one welcomed and accepted into the fellowship of Christian community, just as they are. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that we would see the wonders of heaven on earth, a vision of all people coming together to work towards equality, justice, peace, and care for the earth. There are so many people and places in need of your love and ours. Send out your spirit of comfort to those separated from their families, by the pandemic or by violence, by borders or broken relationships. We pray especially for the people of Palestine and Israel that fighting would cease and a path to justice and peace become clear. Send your spirit of healing to all those who are sick and stop the rising cases of coronavirus all over the world. Send your spirit of calm to all who are stressed, whether by exams or work or money or family. Send your spirit of unity to teach us to listen to one another, even when we do not speak the same language, to understand and treat one another with fairness and kindness. God of all, like a fierce wind, you blow through our lives with love and grace. Keep us speaking words of warmth and welcome to everybody in whatever language it takes to help us understand one another. Carry us forward into the future as more compassionate and caring people, as Jesus Christ taught us to be. And so we pray the words that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Welcome once again to worship with the American International Church in London. Continue worshiping and praying with us throughout your week, and continue sharing your joys and concerns with us so that we know how to be praying for you and with you the best we can. Let me begin the news of the church by saying thank you to our youth who have crafted this service and led us in worship today. Uh, some of our youth who have led us in online worship here are unable to join us in person on Sunday, so thank you for leading us this morning, and thank you to our parents who facilitated uh, some of these videos and some of the, the ways that our youth have been involved in this service. Thank you all. As lockdown continues to ease here in London, we are continuing to discern our way forward. Some of the guidance for places of worship we suspect is still in flux a little bit, but here is what we do know. This week, you don't recognize it yet on YouTube, but on the 23rd of May, our quartet of professional musicians is leading us in music in person in the sanctuary. And in early June, our choir will be regathering in 
a limited capacity at first, but we are hopeful that the guidance may evolve a little bit in regards to our choir. So if you would like to return to worship in person, if you uh, feel safe and ready to do so, uh, please do register for your attendance. Details are in the weekly email for how to do that. Also coming up this summer, as we are now allowed to gather uh, in larger groups outdoors and indoors, um, we are going to be planning some picnics and some meetups around the city. Uh, outdoors is the plan at this point, but do keep an eye on your weekly email for that. As we find ways to be drawn together in the spirit of God from our different neighborhoods around London. Join us as we find ways to reconnect with each other. As we're finding our way forward and looking forward with the hope of the spirit of Pentecost, our ministry continues and we invite you to be part of it. As we regather and reconnect, join us. And as our ministry continues as it has been, we invite you to continue supporting and making all of our ministries possible through your giving. Bank details on how you can give are in the description of this YouTube video below. And now let's continue to worship with our youth and through music as we sing together. <laughs> Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. 
Blessing, a word of appreciation for the gifts that our young people have shared with us today, for all the work they have done to craft the words, to think about what Pentecost means to them and what they want to share with us about it. And a word of thanks, too, for Jonathan and Stepan, who've been chaperoning the group for the last year, and especially to Jared, who has headed up this ministry, brought this group together, and organized this whole service, bringing out the best in our young people. Praise God for the gift of these young voices. We heard from Peter that on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit would enable our young people to see visions and dream dreams. We have heard those visions and dreams today for unity amid diversity, for the ability to move together as a team and build a future of love and peace. May that Holy Spirit blessing dwell with all of us to inspire and challenge us all. As you go out from this place, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, now and always. Amen.